Hello again, Look, Big and Paul here. And what I'm going to do tonight is a bit of a comparison pick between uh, an American Airlock 1105 and a Matlock 5025. Um, and the reason for that is uh, these locks, the American locks, are pretty iconic. They come up very early on in people's lock picking journey. Um, they're a, a green belt lock on the Reddit system. Um, Typically five pins, lots of security features, um, serrated spools are very common in these, and they, they can be quite a tricky pick. Uh, but getting hold of one of these for a reasonable price in the UK is a bit of a challenge. You can find these on eBay, um, they get snapped up really fast and they get bid up quite quickly, which means if you want one, you've normally got to buy one from the States, get it shipped over, by the time you've added shipping and import duty, they can become quite expensive. So you end up having to buy sort of a batch of them, which means you may end up with more than perhaps that you want. Although I would recommend if you're going to pick them, getting a couple of them would be good. They get quite varied bitting, um, which does cause some problems, especially if you get either a very, uh, like a, ones, a one lift or a zero lift pin in there, that can cause you some problems. Um, but they all pick quite differently. They have different levels of wear. This one's got a bit of wear on it and um, it makes the pin feedback a bit dull. But you know, that's all adds to the challenge, doesn't it? And it's uh, a worn lock is much more likely to be encountered in the wild, for example, than a, than a brand new lock. Um, as an alternative, in the UK, you can get hold of one of these, which is a Matlock uh, 5025. This is a six pin lock, it comes with some good bitting as well. Um, and these have lots of security pins, although they don't have, I don't think, serrated spools. I've not had one of these apart yet. Um, but they do have spools, they've got, um, I think, serrated key pins, and they've got, uh, I think, counter milling in the core, which, which the American locks don't have. So if you do a quick comparison pick, I'll gut them both and show them side by side, just so you can see what's inside them. And of course, they've both got removable cores, which means if you're learning, you can you take them apart and progressively pin them. So let's pick both of these, hopefully reasonably quickly. Use top of the keyway tension. And reasonable, reasonably good tension to uh, drive some of that feedback. Now I. I don't like to pick like this with padlocks. Um, unfortunately, it does obscure the view, but I like to use my thumb as a fulcrum. It allows me to control uh, how deep I set the pins because these kind of padlocks do um, overset quite, quite freely, and we do want to avoid that. And I do find on the 11, 1100 pick placement, does need to be quite precise. So it wasn't too hard. Let's try this one. May have overset a pin in here. Yeah, I think I have. Just going to back that out a little bit. Yeah, I had. I had overset. But you, all you have to do is just release a little bit of tension. You'll drop a couple of the pins back down. You'll get that. Uh, you'll get that overset back. Right, so let's just whip these uh, cores out. Back there. And before I continue on, what I am going to do, because 
I do find I can put these back together again the wrong way around. Just stick a bit of black marker on the front of a lock. So I uh, <laughs> remember where the front was. Like I said, I have put them back together again the wrong way around, which is a bit of a pain. And in terms of in terms of picking, whilst I did overset the the master I mean, the matlock, um, to be fair, I think about fifty percent of the time I overset one of these things. Um, like I said, you can get it back, but they pick about the same. The experience is very similar. Right, okay. Where's my marker? In fact, I'll tell you what I am going to do, <laughs> just in case, just in case. Uh, that way we'll avoid any confusion later on, because in terms of cores, they are pretty similar. And obviously you can see uh, the 1100 does actually have space for six pins right uh to what i do i'll lock them back up we'll use the keys to take the cores out uh, that's right let's take the 1100 apart first of all we'll want this one Wow, well, it came off easy. Right. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to put a shim in there. Let's not have a gutting disaster. So there you go. Five pins populated, the sixth is empty. Right, and I'm, I don't have two pinning trays, so what we're going to have to do is use a piece of corrugated paper, and I can hear Nigby right now screaming at the, uh, at the uh, camera, at his screen saying, oh, get another pin tray. Okay, so a second key pin is a serrated key pin third key pin is serrated fourth key pin is serrated and the fifth is serrated only the first one is not serrated and I suspect it's not serrated because it's quite a short pin and I will zoom in on these in terms of what's in the core It's completely smooth. If only it would focus. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's take the pins out. Make sure I get these back in the right order. So the first pin is very heavily serrated. Same with the second pin. Yeah, damn it. We have springs, tiny, tiny springs.
third pin is a serrated and the fourth pin another heavily serrated pin and there we go here's one of the serrated spools In the fifth slot, where is that? There we go. I'll leave the rest of the springs in there. No need to take all those out. Right, let's take this one apart. I'm just going to move that off to one side. There it is. And of course, this one's going to be more difficult to get off because that's the way of things. I wonder if I can just pull that. Oh, nearly had it. So the gutting tool is not quite small enough to get that circlip off. I tell you what, I'm going to need to get something else in there. There we go. Got that. Where's my shim? I'm actually looking forward to seeing what's in here because, like I say, I've never had it apart. Yeah. I think we've had a bit of a gutter disaster there. I caught the uh, spring. Good job, I've got some spares. Right, so that is the uh, first driver. Some subtle differences here. Let's get that pin one out. Steel, steel serrated key pin one, standard key pin two, standard in three, serrated in four, standard in five and a serrated in six and again the standards appear to be standards because they are um, too short but let's have a quick look at this there is counter milling but for some reason I'm having trouble with the uh, with the focus Why? right so just switched modes on the camera and got me focused back. Um, you can see these uh, all six of those chambers are counter milled. So definitely a tougher core on that one. Let's deal with this gutting disaster over here. I should have pushed the shim in further. Idiot. Right, so I don't want to stay that first spring is in. It's knackered. I'll put a new spring in there. Always good to have a load of spares, otherwise things like that happen. Right. So pin number one is serrated, top and bottom. Sorry, pin number two, rather. Three is a spool. Four is a spool. Five is a spool. And six is a spool. So just to compare there. Come over here, you. Yeah. 
So a pretty good comparison of pins. I think the Matlock is a really comparable lock to the uh, to the 1100. So if you if you're uh, having trouble getting hold of an 1100 in the UK, you might want to check out the Matlock because I think it does offer. A good alternative. So yeah, it's the eleven hundred pins on the right and the matlock on the left. So no, I think the one pin it doesn't have, which I, you know, it's a bit of a pity, is that serrated spool on the end there, which is pretty much unique to the eleven hundred, which is quite a cool pin. You think you've you think you're ready to go with that pin, you get the counter rotation, and then you get another serration. So that's it. A bit of a comparison. I hope that was interesting, and now I'm going to go and find a spring to fix that lock with. Cheers. Enjoy your picking.